G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. One of my most popular videos ever was what's in your fencing kit and it's time for a bit of an update. In the past, we featured what was in my personal fencing kit, what was in a typical farmer's fencing kit in Ireland and what was in a professional contractor's kit in the United States. And it was a little bit uneven and we thought maybe it was time for a bit of Aussie content on the professional side of things. So I'm here today with James Higgins from Walters Fencing Contracting in Tamworth. Doesn't get more Aussie than Tamworth. And James is gonna take us through his fencing kit. I can't wait, let's get into it. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, thanks, Tim. Thanks for coming up here. Oh, mate, it's an absolute pleasure to come up here, and thanks very much for your hospitality. Mate, I can't get past this truck. You do things big up here. Yep, yeah, no, this is our Iveco daily four-wheel drive. Uh, it's got three diff locks and two reductions in the gearbox, so if you get bogged in this one, you're really uh, in a tight spot. And the serious gear, I mean, you guys do a lot of kilometres of fencing every year. We do. Um, and you've got some pretty serious equipment, right from some really flash fencing trailers to skid steer models and all sorts of things. And you're into the remote control and, and all of the stuff that we see out there that pros are doing, you're into it. But you've still got a fencing gear kit that you swear by of simple tools. Yep. And I think we can probably learn a bit from going through each tool with you, the reason why you chose that particular tool and why you love it. Sounds good, let's get into it. So it's a fair spread of hand tools here, and I've, obviously you've got all of the fancy motorised stuff as well, but we're just talking hand tools today. Yep. Let's go through the hand tools that you swear by, mate. Right, uh, so I'm a, I'm a gadget lover. I yes. love my little tools and gadgets. Oh, we've got that in So And I also love backups and duplicates, so yes. there's two of some things, and yep. maybe even three of others. First off, um, good pair of Australian-made chain strainers. Two brands here, fancy one and Wireman. Yep. Um, both great, uh, both made in Australia. There's a couple of key features with the Australian made strainers yes. that um, have sort of set the bar now around the world. What, what are the, the main features of either of those two strainers that you swear by? Uh, tension gauge. Yep. So it makes it particularly good for uh, new people when training new guys. Yep. When it gets to the bottom of the plunger, Stop. It's tight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't keep going. Well, it's also good for you too, because if, you, if you're running out a lot of a wire, you get tired through the day, it keeps your consistency up, doesn't it? Yes, that's yeah. it. And grip style is also important. Yes. Something that hangs onto the wire, doesn't fall off. Yep. Yep, so both of them have a different approach to the grip style, but both are working for you. Yes, that's yep. right. Fantastic. Chain length is important, minimum of three metres. Yep. You don't want to happen to be constantly um, you know, going back for extra grabs, you want to be able to do it in one smooth motion. Because a lot of your fences are, are really long and you would strain directly to the post. You wouldn't Correct. be bothering with doing straining knots in the middle. You just go straight to the post. Generally straight to the post. So a long chain is really important for that. Yep. Yep. All right. Yep. I don't like having to uh, pull the full chain up and then have another go. It's no, irritating it's really and annoying. slow. Yeah. Yep. 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 So another important tool is our crimper. Yep. Uh, we like to join the wires with um, crimps and the reason for this is that it transfers the maximum amount of wire strength through instead of a knot. Yes, um, and certainly stronger than knots. Yes, you've been down the road of doing proper tests of this. Yeah, so, had a go anyway. Yeah. yeah, Tim's got some pretty cool videos on use of crimps. Yeah. Uh, this is the fence repair tool. This now, I know a bloke that makes those. Yeah, He's that's... a pretty good guy. Oh, well, it... is, that a, is that a plug, maybe? Uh, maybe a yeah. plug for myself? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it's a good little tool, and that is definitely in your kit. Yes, it is. You don't sell um, stuff that you don't believe in. It's good for repairing old fences. We don't use it very often um, in our professional setting of new fences. Yep. Uh, it's primarily a repair tool, but any time you're doing like gully work or something where you've got to fill in an old gateway, it's very yes. handy for that. Yep. Yep. Uh, we've got the wire needle. This is for threading wire through steel posts. Give you a bit of a, a um, advantage. It works with our PR25 post racks. Okay. And it's also a wire twister. So you feed the wire in the end and just twitch, twitch it around. Twitch it off. So it's yep. got two purposes. Feeding through posts. Mm -hmm. Makes it much, much easier, much faster. Two very basics. Phillips and flathead screwdriver. You never know what you're going to need to uh, fix there. I've given up on um, shifting spanners, speaking of loose nuts. Yep. Nipex plier spanners. They're great because they're actually um, 
ratcheting. So if you yeah, have a okay. nut in there, you can just roll it around the nut. When you look at those, they look like a pipe wrench to begin with, but yes. they're actually not, are they? No, it's it's a pair of um, spanner, essentially. Yep. It replaces a shifting spanner, and they grip really well, nice and tight. So I carry two sizes usually, this one and a smaller one. That's something I'm going to look at next for my toolkit, I reckon. Yeah. Not something uh, I've I call it the Jesus tool, because it does everything. Right. Yeah. Gloves. Uh, I yep. like TIG gloves over normal welding gloves, because you can... Um, these are a yeah, set okay. from Weld Class. Um, I like really soft leather here too. And yes. I hate I hate wearing gloves. A lot of people ask me why I don't wear gloves. So there's a tip. Go TIG gloves. Carry a couple of different tool pouches. Um, good for yep. carrying clips and crimps, that sort of thing. Yep. I've got Barco ratchet spanners. Mm -hmm. uh, these are four in one, so you end up with um, Basically, as many different sizes as you want. You've got four different options: like 17, 18, 16, 19, 15, and so on. Yeah. Okay. So that gets rid of that whole load of sockets that some people carry yep. around. Cute. So three tools basically replaces your socket set. Yep. Uh, I love Nipex gear. As so do we've I. we've got multiple Nipex cutters. Yep. This is my main tool pouch. Yep. So I can carry nippers. Yep. Cutters in two sizes and my little level. So this is for plumbing star posts because professionals make things level. Yes. And amateurs just drive it in and hope for the best. Yeah, right. So we plumb and level all of our star, all, all of our posts. Yep. yep. Um, and so even if you're driving stock posts in the fence line, you'll still level them. Yep. Every single one gets plumbed before you tie or twitch off barbed wire to it. Yep. Or uh, attach hinge joint, etc. Yep. Um, now this is a controversial piece of gear, the nippers. Right. And nippers. Uh, you may notice, Tim, there's no crescent pliers anywhere to be seen Correct. in this toolkit. Correct. So the only crescent pliers we have here in our workshop are the golden pliers that uh, Steve, Steve won. won in 99. Yes. Yep. Uh, and they're mounted on the wall. So end nippers serve the purpose of twitching Right. Cutting in the same motion. So if you're right. twitching yes, off of tie wire, you just you loosely grip, grab it. Yep, loosely spin. grab it. Um, spin it. Yep. Cut it and you're done. So it's extremely efficient. Once you get the hang of it, uh, I wouldn't ever go back to a normal pair of fencing pliers. Uh, and you can get into tight places, um, open your coil of wire, okay. cut off clips. Um, great for trimming rabbit netting, that sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, once you get the hang of it, you wouldn't want to go back. Yeah, right. I might have to add those to my arsenal as well. Yep. There's a few things here to add to our buckets here, guys. He's probably going to want to pinch my spare now. <laughs> probably never see that one again. No. Uh, as you see, I like backups, so I've got two of each. Uh, yep. And the other reason for that is because here at Walters Fencing, we have a large fencing crews. Yes. Uh, there's always bound to be one tool that's gone walkabout or gone missing. Someone puts so, it in the wrong truck or something Rather like than that. Um, a staff member not being able to do their job for the day, Yep. Uh, they've got a spare. A couple of pairs of nipex. And yep. if it happens twice in a row, you know, they buy me a set of tools. Nice. Speed dealers. Speed dealers. People often overlook safety when they're fencing. Now I noticed that these speed dealers here they're a pretty snazzy set. They're actually fitted to your face with padding. They are. So you can't get little bits of steel, because you drive a lot of steel posts, can't get little bits of steel coming in from the side and hurting your eye. Yep, and nothing worse than welding slag or spatter. Yeah. If you've lifted your helmet and you're chipping or something like that, yep. hot bit of slag. Um, hot bit of slag going in your ear, that's never fun. I've yes. had that happen, so. Ow. Ear plugs while you're welding actually serves a purpose. Yep can't get any slag fall in your ear. <laughs> yeah, 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 because you're often welding on the side, so that would be an issue for you. Yep. And I love the fact that these speed dealers are also high definition yellow, so you can go fishing later. That's right. That's good, that's important. Yep. Carry spare drill bits. Yep. Spare grinding wheels. Hate running out of stuff and not being able to do the job. Drill bit sizes that you carry, you work a lot with steel fences. What size drill bits do you carry? Uh, one drill bit, 13 mil. And that's it? Yep. So this is a worth step step bit. Uh, these are a fairly new product. So it's a step drill on the end of a drill shaft. 
So it does away with the need for the pilot hole? Yes, no pilot hole, because that is its own pilot hole. Yep. And you can, if you're drilling for thin material, you've got various steps so you can stop if you want to. Yes. Uh, we use it for drilling through medium wall gow pipe. Yep. And it cuts like butter. Yeah, Best right. drill bit you'll ever find these. When it's blunt, uh, you throw it out. But yep. if you treat it well and don't just you know Ram go balls in. to the wall in there, yeah, it will yeah. last a long time. Have completely revolutionised how we drill holes in this, our strainer posts. And yep. We used to have a press put behind the core of this drill to make it a bit easier on yourself. Yep. We threw the press away when we got these drill bits. And of course, you don't weld your end assemblies. You use notching. So you have to drill the hole, and the reason why you do that is you prefer a floating end assembly because it lasts longer, is that correct? Uh, floating end assembly is uh, adjustable, so yep. if the ground um, shrinks or moves you can come back and, and adjust it, we call it a tie back. And a lot, of, a lot of the fences that you put up are on cracking black clays, yep. um, and they're renowned for moving over time, so there's no such thing as putting up an end assembly and it's staying in one place. Um, you need to be able to adjust your end yes. assemblies, yep. don't you? Yeah. That's it. So we don't generally do a fully welded uh, end assembly just because we want to be able to adjust it as a warranty yep. being down the track if need be. And your fences last for pretty much forever. As it's, yeah. as it's all steel and adjustable, yep. it gives us the option of you know, keeping the client happy down the track if things have been moved. You can go back and fix the problem without having to cut it all apart. And a zero weld system also means you can fence on a total fly band day. Yes. Yeah. Good point. So tape measures, this is a metric and imperial, that way when I'm out in the fence line I can talk to a client, some people will call it a 3.6 metre gate and others will yep. call it a 12 foot gate and you can and show people to envisage. who can't convert easily. And I notice that you've got your standard wire spacing Oh yeah, it's got some, got some scribbles all over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got a 30 metre tape so you can actually you know, get a bit of distance from planning panels, that sort of thing. Mark out your long double gates and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Spare tie wire, just yep. in case there's none on the ute for some reason. Yep. Cable ties, gloves. For everything. Yep, that's it. The only thing I haven't got in here is some tape. But right. I might have to add that to the kit. Might, might have to get yep. some thousand mile tape in that's there right. as well. Yeah. And we've got spares of U clips. Yep. Timber techs. Yep. And there should be some steel techs hiding in here somewhere. There we go. Yep. We use 3 8 drive. Yep. Um, that way it's much less likely to break off and shear off when you're driving into the post. Okay, so go the 3 8 drive. That's yep. the tip when you're using steel fence posts. Yes. Any Well, even with timber, I prefer to use a 3 8 drive just because it's much less likely to shear off and, and yep. break. Yep. And what else have you got here? Another spare Nipex. Another spare yeah, Nipex. This is the extra oh, large good, one. It? No, yeah, give that back. Really good. This is the uh, extra large version. So yeah, it's great yeah. for fence pull down demolition. Yeah. Uh, old yeah. eight gauge wire or bull wire. You can really get in there and cut it. Yeah. And I've stripped one side of the handle off. Right. Uh, and the reason for that is so I can do the twitch in the middle of the fence repair tool. Gotcha. If I don't have Your the needle handy. Yep. So that's pretty much um, what goes into our professional toolkit. This is my personal personal kit, but all yep. of our vehicles are pretty much set up with these tools. Yep. And I've just personalized my own kit based on what works. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel like going down to the shops straight away. James has given me some fantastic ideas for my toolkit there and how I can improve my fencing, and I'm sure he did for you too. Don't forget, if you live in the New England area and you need a good fence, you'd be mad not to get onto Walter's Fencing. They have several crews and all the very best of equipment, and they keep coming up with new innovations every week. I'm going to try and get back there with the crew and spend some time on the fence line in the very short future but in the meantime we've got plenty more great content coming your way on this channel every week so don't forget hit the subscribe button give it a thumbs up hit the bell notification and if you can't wait have a look at old episodes and more content on timthompson.ag and there is a side note a couple of days after our visit james was actually nominated as a finalist in the australian fencing awards have a look at that smiley face well done, James, and well done all of the crew at Walters Fencing. I can't wait to get back and see you again.